A very good afternoon to you once again. After looking at the types of research, um, we have seen different kinds of research in the previous slides. Now let us look at what is an assumption in research. And uh, it's very important to assume before starting any research. And let us see what exactly is that assumption in research that we have to make. And uh, following that one, we will be looking at how to formulate research problem. And please note that we are not looking at the problem statement here. We are looking at the overall research problem. And uh, we will be ending up our presentation with research ethics. This is the overall skeletal framework of uh, how research looks like. And uh, we have been coming across this uh, skeletal framework again and again. But again, I want to stress here just to let you know that there's one word an extra word that has come into play today uh, that extra word is the research assumption here research assumption is not being uh, depicted or not being reflected in most of the uh, skeletal framework of research or you may not find in most of the research papers or in research proposals but research assumption is uh, Though it's not reflected, it's taken care by the researchers. Um, the overall skeletal framework, if I just uh, read, uh, it starts with uh, choosing a topic, then stating a problem uh, based on which that topic is going to address. Then we have got research assumption, what we are exactly assuming when we are starting our research. Then we are questioning uh, through uh, a few research questions. Then we have got objectives. Then we have got research hypothesis and literature review and uh, to the conclusion. The box part over here shows only <clears throat> or the box part is only about 10 to 15 percent of the overall research work. Though it's just a very small fraction of the overall research, it has got the most important weightage while doing research and this box part is called as research problem while carrying out an assignment on choosing a topic you must have come across uh, this four to five uh, stages choosing a research topic then choosing a problem statement then uh, choosing uh, or uh, making your own research questions then coming up with objectives, research hypothesis and all and that thing coming up with this structure at the beginning of the research before even writing a proposal coming up with the mental map in uh, your mind that's what research problem is all about. A research problem is a small framework out of that big skeletal framework of the research uh, and uh, Now let us look at uh, the basic assumption of research uh, before going on with uh, um, framing or formulating research problem we need to uh, know what exactly is research assumption so we might, we'll not be looking at very in very depth with the assumptions of research but we are to look at it at the basic level Assumption is something that we know and we do in our daily uh, activity. An assumption is any uh, belief, you can say any belief, uh, any imagination, uh, any thinking, uh, which is very much blind, but which is uh, logically true and which is not examined neither it is tested nor it is proven so basically a blind logical imagination is what assumption is all about i usually assume that when i take after lunch class most of you will feel asleep so that's my assumption and i also assume that you all must be doing your assignments your uh, homeworks 
uh, your readings on time and uh, my assumption is very blank one but I do not have proof to prove that uh, you must be doing everything on time so that that's basically an assumption basically you are imagining without any proof without any reasoning uh, a person who uh, burps right after lunch and a person who sees or who hears that noise directly assumes that uh, that person must have had a heavy lunch or a very healthy lunch so that's an assumption and you do not have uh, proof or you have not examined whether that person has had actually uh, eaten lunch or not so that's basic assumption no exa no examination or no proof a Cambridge dictionary defines assumption as uh, something that you accept as true without question or proof so basically any kind of belief basically any kind of uh, logical uh, reasoning that has not been proved or that has not been examined is what assumption is all about in research um, before starting with any kind of re uh, re research before starting with any kind of uh, research topic it's very important for us to uh, assume it's very important for us to have an assumption all right uh, for example if I'm going to do uh, my thesis on lichens it's very important for me to uh, assume that uh, I am sure that in my study area let's say my study area is in Wangdi I have to be I have to assume that um, lichen can be found in Wangdi Fodron and I can also assume that um, different kinds of uh, lichen or diversity of lichens can be found within the uh, different altitudinal zones of the study area so that's kind of assumption so assumption is basically a, a mental model or mental map that leads us to have uh, our research so basically an assumption is a building block of our research so without assumption it's very really hard for us to move on so we can see that assumption is basically a framework but um, assumption is an unexamined uh, uh, belief a realistic expectation which is something that we believe to be true um, again when we look at assumptions from the point of view of evidence uh, what we need to uh, see is that assumptions are basically belief and there are no evidence that these beliefs are true or these beliefs are realistic basically assumption is basic belief without adequate evidence or uh, without any testing so uh, uh, but assumption uh, gives us an opportunity to uh, build our research on like I said uh, if I want to do my research or if I want to do my thesis on lichens I assume that that place is going to have lichens so that assumption is uh, leading me to do research on lichen in that particular place uh, to define uh, assumption assumption is our assumptions are statements that are taken for granted and or are considered true even though they have not been scientifically tested so at this point of time you must be getting confused with hypothesis and assumption so the next slide will or after a few slides you may get clarified what assumption uh, is all about and how it is different from um hypothesis yes uh hypothesis is basically uh basically a second level of assumption you are uh scrutinizing or you're precisely uh me focusing your assumption to one direction for example uh let us still work with the uh, example of lichen if i want to study lichen in on the uh, district my assumption would be there are good diversity of um, lichens in Wang Dipodrong. And the hypothesis may be uh, hypothesis may be 
um, um, Wang Di Putong has higher number of lichens compared to other districts. So that that is how this is. So you see the difference. Um, assumption is just assuming that there are going there are lichens in Wang Di Putong. A very blank thought, but hypothesis is saying that there are actually it's not about there are lichens in Wang Di Putong, but there are higher numbers of uh, lichens in Wang Di Putong district. So we are leading one more step from assumptions when we are going to uh, hypothesis. So. Uh, assumptions are basically beliefs and ideas that we hold to be true so these are not being statistically proven but hypothesis like i said is one level up than assumption is a prediction uh, assumptions are having little or no evidence or are not statistically being uh, tested in research but hypothesis now the hypothesis of having more lichens in Wang Di Fujong than any other districts in the country. So we need to test that whether other country, other uh, districts are having more or uh, Wang Di Fujong district is having more. So we need to test that statistically. So hypotheses are usually tested statistically later on. And uh, so similarly like that, we have got uh, correlation uh based on the beliefs but um in case of hypothesis we have got correlation based on statistics and all so an example of uh, assumption and hypothesis can be let's say we want to compare uh the iq of uh, the students and the uh, the way that they learn foreign language so the assumption can be there is a correlation between student students iq and their achievement in learning a foreign language so assumption just states that there are some correlations or there are some associations between iq and learning achievement so it's not saying that there are higher uh, iq level uh, with regard to higher learning achievement uh, or like uh, higher iq where students uh, achieve more learning so this kind of direction is not being said at the assumption level but at hypothesis level you find that um the higher iq students have the better the higher the the higher iq the students have the better they achieve in learning a foreign language so there is a clear path set out here which we can test statistically later on if i just go back again um uh, this example is mainly to deal with the level of IQ and uh, the uh, the achievement that they have in learning foreign language, whether higher IQ is giving higher uh, foreign learning uh, achievement or lesser IQ is having lesser IQ is giving lesser uh, foreign le learning uh, achievement or not. And at assumption level, it's just saying that there are some relation between uh, students having IQ and uh, achievement in learning the foreign language it's not saying whether it's high or low but it's just saying that there are some association but at hypothesis level it's saying that higher iq of the students have better uh, achievements in learning foreign language so it, it has a clear uh, part set another example to make you uh, clarify it between assumptions and hypothesis is that um, uh, uh, there are two kinds of teachers here one is directive uh, foreign language teacher which directs uh, which teaches in a directive um, manner and there is a uh, non-directive foreign language teacher and we want to see whether students are performing better or students whether students are achieving better taught by directive uh, foreign language teacher or non-directive foreign language teacher so at assumption level it says that there is an effect of the way a foreign language teacher teaches to the students. So it just says that there is some uh, relation between the way that students learn the foreign language taught by two kinds of 
uh, teachers. And it's not saying that directive uh, foreign language teacher is better than non-directive uh, foreign language teacher. It's not saying at this point. But hypothesis will say that students learning a foreign language achieve better than better from directive foreign language teacher than those from non-directive foreign language teacher. So it's pointing at one direction. The last example that uh, I'll be giving you, which will, which I hope will make you uh, more clear, is again on the learning language, uh, 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 learning language example. So, uh, if we, if students want to uh, learn language, there are two ways to learn language. One is to uh, prompting themselves to. Uh, 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 one is to have the repetitious use of prompting method and one is to have uh, non-repetitious use of prompting method and obviously we know that if you have got repetitious use of prompting method we will learn language more easy easily and uh, uh, easily as compared to uh, the non-repetitious use of prompting method so Assumption will just say that yes, there is some effect, or there are some effect on learning language from repetitious prompting students, and you're not looking at uh, whether the 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 learning is more from re, uh, repetitious prompting effect or the whether the learning is less from re, uh, repetitious prompting effect. So, hypothesis is going to say that. Students using language learning materials with repetitious use of prompting learn more effectively than those using learning language materials without repetitious use of prompting. So it's again setting at a clear direction. I hope that uh, from these examples, you must have known what exactly is assumption and what exactly is hypothesis. So assumption is basically um, believing in uh, some statements some principle some principles without having uh, very concrete uh, evidence or without having that principle or that belief statistically tested well hypothesis is uh, that same statement that we had given in assumption but we are sitting at one one particular direction which can be statistically tested